Anybody have any questions at this time? What do you do to warm up? Like how, how important it is to just play, or do you actually do specific things to warm your fingers? No, I just play songs. Just play songs. Yeah, when I practice, um, uh, when I practice, when I'm well, I'm going to do a show and all that sort of stuff, I play like I'm playing the show. You know, uh, I I don't just practice a few things and noodle around. I play the songs like I'm playing them to you, to an audience. You know? And if you were teaching, like with, with, with teaching, like you know, you specifically, you just get get. I teach kids, mm -hmm. you just get them to play songs and yeah, yeah, and and do chord changes, yeah. learn how to count the bars. You know, that was yeah. the first thing that my mother showed my brother Phil and I was how a song construction works. Mm -hmm. And it was the, one, some of the most valuable information I've ever been given. And it was really simply this. Okay, this is the, what we call the introduction. Now, this is the first verse, right? So the verse is, Yesterday, all my troubles So there's the chords. Then the second verse goes, Suddenly, I'm not there. Oh, it's the same chords. So we'll call that A. That's, so that's yesterday is A A B B A. That's yesterday. You understand? So the chord sequence for A is F A seventh B minor uh, D minor to B flat C to F, right? And it does that twice. And that, so that that's that's two A's. And then why she had to know that that's the bridge. It does that twice. So we'll call that two B's. So A A B B. And then the last verse. Uh, yesterday, I'm not half a man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, I believe it. Yesterday, that's A, that's one A. So yesterday is A, A, B, B, A. That's what my mom taught me, how to work that out, you know? And um, so all songs have a pattern. So these patterns reoccur. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to look at the big picture straight away. You can put it together like a jigsaw puzzle and then see it as the overall picture. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's one way of doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, as far as teaching goes, these days, um, like uh, next week I'm doing a camp with 120 students with three other teachers and we'll do four lessons a day. And most of those people will want to learn us either songs of mine, songs of Jerry Reed, or songs of Chet Atkins. Normally, that's what people want, 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 want to learn who come to one of my camps. Of course, they get a lot more information than, than that. My camps involve, uh, we do workshops on performance, on preparation to play, on building a repertoire, on uh, stringing your guitar, on getting used to the sound of being in tune, all the, all the detail, you know. And then I have a guy who talks about getting your name out there and using um, the internet to, to help you uh, promote yourself. I have a guy who, who specializes in, in, in that. And then I have other guys who teach jazz, who, who, who teach uh, blues and all that kind of stuff. So we kind of mix it up. So when a person comes to one of my camps under my name, the, they're either fans of mine or they're, they, they want to learn some of my songs or they're interested in knowing how to get themselves going in, in the business. The question I'm asked the most, by, by, especially by m parents, is how can my son or my daughter get, <coughs> get going doing what you're doing, by doing what I'm doing, right? And I always tell them, well, they've got to get some good songs to play, you know? It, that's, what, that's what draws people to you. If you're playing good songs, you know, because at the end of the day, all you have is the quality and integrity of your, your music, whatever it is. So you've got to have some good songs to play. You can, you can dazzle people with a bit of flair and technique or, you know, banging and tapping and doing all that. But you've got to have something good to say. You've got to touch people in here. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm always looking for a, a melody that that, uh, you know, people like to watch you play fast, people like to see you do things that they know are difficult and all that kind of stuff, and, and you put all that out there, but every time people say, when you play those ballads, that's what we, that's what really touches our heart, and I know that, you know. So I try to 
find a mixture, a good balance of, of entertaining songs, of telling stories, of being able to do things that constantly surprise people. Because I found out a long time ago that entertainment equals surprise me. It's a real simple thing and it's like right there in front of us all the time and we don't really look at it. But it's true. To be entertained is to be constantly surprised. So I try to do that with my arrangements and with the way I put my show together, is to never be predictable and, and to always do something that's unusual. Uh, I'll just give you a real simple example. Um, I was asked to arrange a, a Burt Bacharach song called Close to You, which was a, f a song from the 60s by the Carpenters, right? And I thought, well, this song's been done a million times and I've got to do something different with it. How can I surprise people with this song? I went looking for unusual chords and put them in places where people didn't expect and I'll show you what I mean. So, so... <laughs> structure of the song, but just changing it around. So these are just things I worked out myself, and, and and I just went looking for those chords. You know, I don't read music, and I never had, I never had any training. I'm still, yeah, I'm the Indiana Jones of the guitar world. You know, making it up as I go along. <laughs> you know, but uh, I just love good good songs, good good melodies. You know, and uh, so I'm always trying to, always on the lookout for. Uh, an interesting song to, to, to make an arrangement. Yeah. Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. Hey, tell me, how did you write Villa Anita? Villa Anita, wow, that was a long while ago. That was back in uh, oh, when I had hair and teeth. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Villa Anita, I wrote with um, uh, Reggie Bowman, who was in the Southern Suns at that time. And he had a, um, he had a chord structure. <laughs> That was it, wasn't it? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. That was a, an example of um, getting together with a co-writer who already had like a chord structure going 
right? And um, and I'm trying to remember the date because this is we we wrote that in February of 2000, no, of 93, yeah, 93, yeah. So and the chorus went. Uh, <laughs> That song is an example of somebody has a chord structure and I wrote a melody over the top of it. It's the same as Hellos and Goodbyes, it's an another song of mine. Um, the drummer, Virgil Donati, um, wrote, wrote the chord structure of that song. And because he knew I was writing for my album, The, the Journey, and so he had this, because he plays piano as well. Right? So Virgil had this thing with a, a drum machine. And a, and a piano part, and he said, ha have a listen to this chord structure, so that... So I 
put the groove down with the with the guitar and the and the bass part and then a rhythm part. Then I wrote the melody over the top of it, and that's how I, that's how I used to write. You know, I used to use the um, uh, the multi-tracking uh, tape machine as my songwriting tool. And you can still do the same thing. The only difference is now I just whip out my iPhone and press record and play into my phone wherever I am at an airport or a hotel or backstage or whatever. Whip it out and play and just save it. And then I just load it into my computer when I get back to the hotel and there there's the track, you know, and then I can just listen to it and and see if it's if it's working, you know. So that's what I do nowadays, you know. Yeah. Anybody else have a, have a question? Yeah. Tommy, your yes. right, right hand is doing all sorts of crazy <laughs> stuff on different songs. How do you, give us a, a lesson on finger picking and different styles, your top three finger picking styles on how you Oh, choose. okay. Well, um, the basic finger picking is the thumb is separate to the finger. Right? This is the kind of Merle Travis chair. Happens. Uh, think that, um, and that's that, that kind of um, evolves uh, through working on just getting the thumb to take care of the bass. Uh, so when I teach somebody finger style from the, from the beginning, I usually put their hand down there and tape their fingers to the guitar so they can't use them because immediately people want to go. They want to play that second beat with their fingers, because it's easy. See that? What you've got to develop is this. With the thumb doing everything, right? So you, you get the thumb. Like that. So the thumb plays like a bass part, spelling out the chord. There, there's the bass part. Okay. And then you go. I'm, I'm kind of hinting at what chord it is. Then I go. Then I, I get my fingers to play the, the, the melody on top. Johnson and that kind of stuff. 